Hi, everyone. Before the interview start, I mean, I never do this usually, but I wanted to tell you about uh, this T-shirt and I, I am wearing. Um, it's made by Pressure Cooker Arts and it's a, a massive fundraising campaign for Gaza. The funds are going to be uh, going towards UNRWA, Macan, and MSF. I'll put the link in the description of the video, but the T-shirt says in Arabic, and in English, you will never walk alone and because um, Gaza will never walk alone. So um, if you want to support the campaign, check the link in the, in the description below. Thank you. Problems here. <laughs> Good afternoon, Sliman. Good afternoon. Um, Shukran Iktir for taking the time to, uh, to, to talk to me. Alain Frank, this is my, my pleasure. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, um, I wanted to talk to you about obviously what's happening in, at the moment in Gaza, but also mainly about your role as an artist. You've been one of the most important artists um, of Palestine for, for, for decades now. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, so as a colonial project, Israel very quickly, when it was established and actually prior to that, started um, a, you know, to try to erase the Palestinians. You know, like uh, they stole books, they stole art. Um, and as all colonial projects, I guess you try to erase the presence of another people over the last 12 months, nearly now, um, we've been looking at um, a genocide in Gaza that potentially is expanding now to the West Bank. I was wondering, like, you were born in 47. Yes. How would you, how would you relate, in a way, to, to what's happening and to, you know, Israel trying to erase you as well as the Palestinian people? But this is, this is something not new. I mean, we've been, uh, as artists, we've been uh, you know, to, to express the Palestinian identity. But because of the denial of our existence, we started that from the early 70s. So this is, I mean, that the denial of our existence is not something new. This is an old, uh, this is uh, the old and old, uh, strategy of the Zionist movement. <clears throat> but, and, but you know, I mean, the, the problem is that they, they, they just they don't want to erase our our existence now. They are trying to erase our existence since thousands of years. It's amazing, you know, how they can do that. But But, you know, to tell you the truth, as an artist, this time is very hard for me. It's the hardest time I ever uh, been in, 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 been, you know, because Gaza it, it changed a lot of the world, you know, and and we are amazed that it can change Palestinian art. But but this notion or this idea of changing Palestinian art in one day and one night it's impossible. And and, and 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 you know because we we have that that intent. I, I personally I can't work anything because every every time I, I start working in my studio, I start thinking about the change and what shall I do and and I think this doesn't come like like a decision. It comes slowly with time and in work you know while you work it comes. So, so yeah. this is this is my situation as an artist in this time. I I feel in Gaza, you know, I see what they what they do. Sometimes they make art. They they do art without any colors, you know, because their studios were destroyed. They don't have any colors, so they use ink and and paper. 
So, so one of the main characteristics perceived in art today is lack of color. You know, there is no color. It's all grayish and black and white. It's very similar to Gaza as it is now. Yeah, and you um, you said in a in an interview that the whole idea of Israel is narrative. Mm -hmm. Narrative. What, what did you mean by that? Do you mean, yeah, the idea of Israel being a narrative? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's you know, the, they built the, the whole, the whole idea is about a story in the Bible. And we don't know who wrote that story anyway. And and you know archaeology, the, it 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 showed that many of these stories are wrong. You know, in the Bible, they are not really stories. And and uh, they are not uh, an historical facts. The, all their idea about Zionism is is built on these ideas, on these narratives. So I think the, 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 this is what I meant, and 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 and, and that's why the I mean, I mean the narrative for the Israelis is very important, and I'm sad to say to say that the, the it became it, it became our job also to say a narrative in a different way, and this is not our job. Because we, we we didn't create ourselves, you know, we didn't create any 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 imaginary facts or anything, you know. But but we I, I for one, you know, I, I believe that many of the Palestinians originally they were Jews, you know, but they changed religion. And I mean, you, you can't. I mean. Like if you say that the Arabs in Palestine came with, with the Islam, and what, what about the Arabs in Syria, and what, what about the Arabs in Lebanon, in Iraq, in Egypt, they all came with Islam. It's impossible, you know, to say something about the history. And um, in in another interview, you you were talking about art as a as a social instrument um, is it important for you that art should be um, linked to to life and the social aspect of life yes i think um, you know uh, and sometimes i think about that and if, if i am a political artist or not i'm not I just paint what I see and what I feel and what I find around me. When I go from Jerusalem to Ramallah or to Birzeit, I, I, I see many things on the, on the road. So I paint what, what I see, what I experience. And I think that's my duty to express my feelings in this situation. If I don't do that, I think this is a political uh, de de decision. If if I if I run away from whatever these feelings are, and I paint nice flowers all the time, I think this is a political decision. And but but to be truthful to yourself, you have to express what you what you go through, you know, in life. And I was wondering about this, like you, you were born in 47. Um, what does aging, getting older, means to you both in a way as a Palestinian, but also as an artist? As, as, as an artist, I think I'm, I'm becoming tired, you know, I think. You know, when I was younger, I used to fight much more. And I wouldn't sit at home so long time. I spent all my time in my studio trying to do something. 
but now I, I feel that I have to stay at home. I don't have the energy, you know, as, as an artist. And I think as a human being also. I try to show this in my work, you know, sometimes, especially when I work in mud, and the mud cracks. And I think these cracks, they symbolize not only me, my personal health and my personal life. It reflects also the geography of Palestine, the fragmentation and so on. So, so this is talking about art and aging. And uh, on your on your Instagram page and on social media, you are posting a lot of artwork that you made in the 80s. It still feels very, very relevant today. Um, I was wondering what this says about your process, but also about the Palestinian struggle that what you made in the 80s still has so much relevancy today. Yes, because uh, yeah, nothing changed. It's the same situation. Maybe now it's becoming more clear, the occupation. Now I feel the occupation much more than 10, 20 years ago. But, but still, it's the same situation. And, and if I, at that time, if I reflected in my art, if, if, I, if I expressed my feelings and what I saw, it's the same thing today, it's the same. And it shows that what I did 30 years ago was really, it came out from my heart and it's truthful. And, and talk, talking about this, a lot of the work you made 30 years ago uh, stemmed from this um, new vision collective, which was created in um, 1987 uh, at the start of the first Intifada. Uh, why did you feel at the time that it was important to create such a, a collective? At, at, uh, at that time, the Intifada, it, it, it had a kind of philosophy. And the philosophy of that intifada was that we should boycott anything foreign, anything from, from Israeli products. So this gave us the idea to not only to us, to artists, but to many people. They were, you know, planting their, their gardens to get tomatoes and whatever. Everybody wants to eat from his own work. So we thought at that time, why don't we as artists do the, do the same? Why should we buy all colors made I don't know where in Israel or in Holland or what, wherever, and paint against Israel? There's something wrong in, in this uh, in this way of doing things. So it, it, the idea came to us that we should use or we should search for uh, natural materials to do our art. And everyone, you know, it's, it's according to his own uh, education and to his own or her own uh, uh, childhood experiences. Everybody searched in his memories and came out with something. I, I remember that I was helping my grandmother doing beehives in the summer, somewhere when I was like five, six years old. And, and for a child, you know, playing in the mud and the water in summer, it was like a heaven, you know. And I kept that, that, in that idea or that, uh, that memory in my mind. And when I thought about a local material, I thought about mud and hay. I started doing uh, my work with that. In the beginning, I, I, I used it as a medium. I put uh, powder colors with the, with the mud, and the mud became red and became blue and became red, green and so on. And I painted with that like I, I, I paint in, in, in color, in oil color. 
But you know, when, when you work with mud and when it dries, it, they become cracks in it because, because the water goes out and the, the, the cracks come there. So I was all the time you know, trying to, to close these cracks. And I used to spend a lot of my time closing these cracks. And then one day I started thinking about these cracks. They could be beautiful. And I started seeing the beauty in these cracks. And these cracks, without colors, they look much, much nicer. So, I mean, the process is like, when it comes in time, you know, how, how, you, how you develop your, your, your art. And, and if you want to, to speak about, about experimentation, I, I notice when, when I start doing something, I'm very happy and I do a lot of, a lot of things and beautiful things. But when I master the experiment, I lose interest in it. I stopped, I stopped working in it. And I mean, not only in mud, but in, in every kind of... I used egg temper, I used many, many things. And always, you know, when I master the technique, I lose interest. And I mean, the discoveries while you are working are really very, 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 very refreshing. And uh, uh, a, lo a lot of people describe your work and your art as an embodiment of yes. steadfast steadfastness or sumud in, in, in Palestinian. Do you agree with that? Do you agree uh, or, or do you like when people refer to your work as steadfastness and sumud? I mean, yes, it could be, you know, because, because when, you, when we talk about identity, I, I talk about uh, the, the connection between the human beings and the land. So when, when I paint uh, you, people working in the fields, it, it's as if I am, as if I am encouraging, encouraging them to stay in the fields and to, to work more in the fields and to stay there and not to leave their homeland. So from here, I think, came the idea the notion of steadfastness, and uh, and I use you know I use woman as a symbol of the land, but but but, but these women should they have uh, they should be, I mean they have some conditions. That that the, the women that represent Palestine should be very beautiful. It's good if she ha if she have. Like olive, yani olive colors for the eyes, and her neck should be long, to show that she is very proud. And her hands are big, to show that she works in the fields, and to show her connection to the land. And she always should wear a Palestinian dress, with Palestinian embroidery, to show her identity. All all these you know combined together. They give the feeling that of steadfastness, you know, of staying in, in your land, not leaving your homeland. And um, and this will be my, my my last question. And and again, thank you, Sliman, for taking the time to to talk to me. Um, I was wondering, what would you like your legacy to be? How would you like to be remembered? You know, I'm, I, I don't think that I'm only an artist, you know. I, I organized a lot of things. I, I was one of the founders of the Palestinian Artist uh, Union in the Occupied Territories. And I was the founder or the co-founder of the first art institution in Jerusalem, al -Wasati. And I was the co-founder of the first art academy in Palestine. And I spent a lot of my of my life 
uh, you know, doing like free work for institutions and for people, you know. What, what do you call it, you know, when you work for free? عملت طبعي. Anyway. So, so I, I spent yeah. a lot of my time doing that. But, but also I like that, I like the idea that I, uh, I speak to the feelings of the people in the whole world. You know, because if you, if, if you have everything on your side, but you don't, you can't speak to the feelings of the world. Nobody will, will you know, no, I mean, nobody will listen to you. In our case, now in Gaza, the, the blood of the children, it, it spoke to the whole world. And I mean, everybody was, was sad to see the children and, 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 their, and how they die. Much more effective than doing a painting or doing art. Thank you, Sliman. Shukran, shukran, Iktir. Alien Frank. Nice talking to you.